Hey everybody, you're very welcome back to a Skogok Mark. My name is Joe Price and behind the camera today is Ida Olsen. Hello everyone! <laughs> and we're just out here today hiking in this beautiful night nature reserve and we're going to have some fika or some coffee and some lunch or maybe the weather is... It's a beautifully clear day today but maybe the weather decides to change. So I wanted to share my shelter kit video. It's one that got a lot of attention a couple of years ago on the Living to Learn channel and I thought I'd remake it again in a bit more detail with a bit of Ida's quality and show you what I carry in my shelter kit. Not so much to emulate what I have done. My shelter kit is built to my needs and what I do in the outdoors, but maybe it'll inspire some of you guys and girls to maybe build something like this of your own. When you go outside, besides the kit that you carry, the most important thing to have is a good mindset and a good pre-planning at moments. So diving straight in, this is my Yakari S or Chikari S. This is the smallest one. I'm not going to get into these pouches, but maybe if you guys and girls would like to see it, I'll do a proper loadout. But here I have first aid, I have food, I have my shelter kit, and then I got some spare clothes, ponchos and the like, should the weather change. But diving straight in, I can open up the top, really easy to grab, out it comes. This is my shelter kit. With the addition of a sleeping bag and some other increments, I can make this into a 24 hour, 72 hour kit. Maybe not so much in the winter, but again, I'm only carrying this today because me and Ida want to stop for a moment and have some coffee or some lunch, or just in case a bit of bad weather comes in. On the outside, this is the Savoda medium tactical pouch. There is a larger one, a smaller one, but this fits my needs. Molly adaptable. And the reason why I like this is because I carry a lot of Savoda's packs and they're all molly capable so I can either put this inside my small pack or I can attach it to the front of my medium pack or to the side of my larger pack. So again I don't have to do much thinking before I leave and I don't have to do much thinking when I get into the woods. On the back I have two tent stakes just so I don't have to go fumbling around for them. These are cheap ABS plastic tent stakes not ideal for these ground conditions but they will work in a pinch. I have stuff to sort that out on the inside there. But it's just so I can quickly access them, get them ready, just in case it's a windy day and I need to pin my tarp down or I need to pin some things down from blowing away. On the side here, I have some carabiners from Lesovic. These are ultra light ones. S beaners would do the same of the comparable size. But it's just when the weather gets bad, I get all fingers and thumbs. Now you could be out hiking for three or four hours, maybe a little hungry. It starts to rain and you just want to get your shelter up and maybe the you haven't reached your camp and the place that you got to is not ideal so having to carve toggles or break sticks off the ground is not what you want to do six of these weigh as much as probably a small branch so it's just nice to have them on the outside i have some glow in the dark toggles on there again just in case it's night this is a black pouch in fact nearly every pouch looks black at night so just so i can find it in the top of my bag i can open it up and these do be glowing away again makes it simple i open it up and when you make a shelter kit, a shelter kit of any description, you want to think steps ahead. That's why it's nice to get out and practice. You don't want to be taking your tarp out when it's not the first step. You don't want to be taking loads of tent pegs out when it's the last step. So for me, the first thing I like to do is set up my ridge line. So right on top is my ridge line. This is one that Ida made for me just the other day. So it's super fresh, not the usual gnarly bunch of cordages, which you'll see in here. It's got some toggles on there, some pre-made Prusik loops. It's about seven meters of cordage, which will get me up between most trees. And this is the first step that I want to do. So I just take this out. I can drop my pouch on the ground and put my ridge line up. There's an awful lot of videos on these ridge lines on the internet, but should you like to see one, I'll happily make one for you guys and girls. Next out is my tarp. I'm not going to open the tarp out now. I've been carrying this for a couple of years. This is the Warbonnet Superfly XL. It's a beautiful tarp, but it's not a square tarp. It's shaped more like an hourglass. And the reasons why I like it is because it gives you 360 coverage. It has doors um, on either end that you can fold in and doesn't sacrifice too much space. It gives me 360 coverage, unlike the usual A-frames that you would see with square tarps where you are left with two openings on the end. If you want to create doors with those tarps, you have to think, you have to fumble. This tarp. I just stake it down and it's already set up to go. I can use it in my hammock in the summertime to give me a bit of shelter from the wind, but in the winter time like this, I can just set it up really low on the ground, 
and it gives myself and Ida 360 protection from the wind. Noticeably on the outside here, you can see that I have a carabiner set up. This is some of the pre-game before you leave home. Again, being fingers and thumbs in bad weather, people tend to flop their tarps out and they don't know which corner is which, which center line is which. So these ultralight carabiners are perfect. I have one here and one on this end. So when I throw my tarp out on the ground in bad weather, this carabiner gets clipped and this carabiner gets clipped, my tarp is up. No fumbling, no messing. It doesn't have to be a carabiner. You can use some bright power cord or whatever method you want to use for indicating which setup and which tie outs you're gonna need straight off the bat. So that's my Superfly, a War Bonnet Superfly XL. Now, next out is the 10 stakes because I already had two out. My ridge line is up, my tarp is on my ridge line. And here is my 10 stakes. These are more designed for tougher ground conditions, but they're just a mixed match of many different sets. I don't know about you, but I'm forever losing 10 stakes in the ground when I go out. So I have some Lesovic ones, some MSR ones, some plastic ones, and cordage. It's one thing you'll see that runs around. I always carry lots of cordage, because sometimes again, in panicky situations, you want to just strap stuff down. You're not really thinking. Cordage is the hardest, one of the hardest things to replicate in nature. So just some 10 stakes. Next out is my gear hammock because by now my tarp will be staked down up my ridge line nice and tight my gear hammock here got an awful lot of attention on my personal facebook page there a couple of days ago this one is made by lesovic there is many gear hammocks out there but i like this one an awful lot the great thing about having a gear hammock is it uses that dead space in a tarp at the top where you don't normally get anything it stretches out and it's basically like a little mini hammock and I can keep all my gear up off the ground, especially the important stuff, clothes, stuff that I want to, my phone, battery chargers, just makes great use of that dead space. And when I'm lying down, it acts like a gear shelf in a tent where I'm able to just reach up and get my head torches and stuff like that. Just makes life a little bit more comfortable. Also multi-use, this one ain't strong enough to be used as a chair, as I know some people do. But the reason why I also like it is because I can use it as a spare backpack cover. I do carry a, a purpose-built backpack cover for when the weather turns bad, but at least I got a second option here should I want to cover it up or the camera equipment that I have with me. So that's my gear hammock. A great addition for those who tarp on the regularly or hammock on the regularly and takes up no space. And last but not least, just in case you think there's some magic trick going on here, it's not a Mary Poppins thing. This all has come from inside this pouch. But down on the lower section here, I have hanks of various size cordage. Two meter cordages for tie outs from our tarp. I have spare ridge lines, old ridge lines, and I'll just pull it out there. And you can see all nicely bundled up, different lengths of bank line. Again, bank line. Some old ridge lines that already have Prusik loops on them, should I need to work them up. Two meter lengths and an eight meter length. And that all fits beautifully in the Savoda M pack, which in itself is very water resistant, very weather resistant with a drainage hole on the end. And it just gives my gear that extra bit of protection. It being with such sturdy molly loops on the back, should I go away from camp and want to attach it to my belt, I feel safe enough to do so. Absolutely perfect for what I need. So that is my shelter kit. Again, built for my needs on a daily, play, on a daily basis when I'm outside. But with some additions, it could be made to 24 hours, it could be made winter ready, summer ready, but a good place to start. Again, I, you don't have to go out and build it exactly like I have with the elements that I have. But as always with this channel, we hope that it inspires and it maybe give you some ideas for your own hiking shelter kit for when you're out and about outside. As always, thank you for joining myself, Anita, and um, stay safe. Peace.